Passing one day under the arch, I looked up and asked the grin of bone, Who were you before Queen chose you as her horse? And the horse said, Will I tell you my own story? It is the tale of pain. I have shed all the trappings of flesh, skin, and mane. In my past life, I was not a horse, but a woman like you, or rather, a woman quite unlike you. When I was a girl, I used to live in a tower, a misshapen tree of stone, hidden in the forest, it was mine. The woman who built it was not my mother, she had bought me for a handful of radishes. I remember of my early childhood, except the odd glimpse of rust on a gate, butter in a churn. I knew what a town was, and a plow, and a baby, though I couldn't remember having laid eyes on these things. The woman said there must have been a time when my eyes were not clouded, but from the day I fell into her hands, I was blind as a mole. The only thing I had from the time before was a comb made out of an antler. With the comb I used to form my long hair into a sheep, then into coils as slick as the stream that wound through the wood. The woman was my source of knowledge. She taught me you only have the right to kill a creature when you know its names and ways. As the years pulled me toward womanhood, my hair began to grow faster. One day I could sit on its sharp ends, and another day again I could cover my knees with it. I felt its weight pulling at the back of my head. I said, I wish I could live up there in the light, in a high tower. With her weathered hands, the woman brought stones from the old mine and took mud and leaves and built a tower where the thorn bushes grew. When I shook my head out the first window, higher I crowed. So she fetched more stones from the old mine and built another till the round wall hoisted itself up almost as high as the trees. We went back to our old life except that as I shelled nuts and chopped roots in the highest room of the tower, the light was white against my face. But soon I had a nightmare of the hunt. The wood was full of men who were also stags and also the dogs that chased them. My heart was caught in a tangle of hedge my clothes shredded by the thorns. There is no safety. There is no cover. I could not awaken, but only when the woman came upstairs. She held me until I slept, whispering in my ear all the names of the herbs. The next day, the trees were no friends of mine, I told her. I'm afraid of the forest. I can't rest for fear of the wind and the wolves and the hunting horn. But the forest is what we eat. Do you think I'd let you be hurt? She asked, but I trusted nothing but stone, I begged. Lock up the window below me, and the window below that, and all the windows there are except this one. The door at the foot of the tower could still open, but why would I climb down when the woman brought me everything I needed? I leaned out the window and let down a basket on a rope I had woven with old rags. I sat in the high room and chopped radishes, singing to amuse myself. I sang of the moon and a prince and a ring. The woman called up. Where did you hear such things? In the stories. What stories? Who's been telling you stories? I must have heard them in the time before. I had never seen a man, but I could imagine. I could hear the stomping into the woods, and I sang on. And then, like an answer to my song, he came. Who is it who sings so beautifully? Come to this window, that I may see your face. I sat like stone. At first light, the woman climbed up with fairies. She hadn't heard a thing. The next night, I was ready for him. Will you come down for me? He asked. I cannot. I'm afraid of waking the woman. Is she your mother? No mother, nor nothing to me. Can I come up then? At first, it seemed impossible, and then I remembered the rope. The prince was all I had imagined, his hand grasping mine at the window was strong as a willow, his neck smelt of lavender, and the shirt on his back was clean as water, his voice was rough but musical. I asked him, what do I sound like? I knew I would have no peace till I saw you. I asked, what do I look like? I knew I would have no peace until I touched your face. We were in accord by sunrise. The next day, the woman brought me a basket of peas. She was snappish today, and I couldn't stop smiling. What ails you today? she asked. Nothing. 
nothing you need to know, or maybe something you never will. The bowl crashed against the wall. I could hear peas race across the stone. The woman bawled. I've used up my years to keep you warm and fed, she said. I replied, the fruits of the forest are free for all. I have given my days to keep you from loneliness. The birds and beasts are more faithful. I have worn out my arms, piling stone on stone, because you begged me to keep you safe from the wind and the wolves and the hunting horn. You should have known better than to give me what I wanted. Now the wind is scented with lavender, and the wolves howl because they cannot have him. When he blows his royal horn, I will go to him. At last she said, nothing less royal. Then I heard her smash something down between us and guided my hand over the pieces of horn. Common horn. The horn was mine. I knew I would have no peace till I found you a prince. The voice deepened into a rough musical voice, a voice I knew. I pulled back and threw sharp fragments at her face, calling her witch and monster. When her footprints died and my pulse had stopped roaring, I wept into my hair. I realized that my hair was my own to do with what I would with, and saw through the plates one by one. Knotted together end by end, the plates made the strangest rope. I let myself out the window. I walked to the edge of the clearing, hands out before me. A little way into the woods I found berries I recognized. I wouldn't starve for all her rage. I must have slept for a little because when I woke, it was night, silky blackness pressed on my eyelids. Steps in the clearing, I stiffened. She was at the base of the tower, sobbing, begging to be let up. I had to remind myself there was no prince. I heard the puffs of breath as she began to climb, but then there was a wail, like an animal in a trap, and then a sound like a hollow tree, falling in the first storm of winter. After several minutes passed, I edged forward. Her eyes were shut, wet with what I thought were tears until I tasted it. I picked the thorns from her lid. I asked, can you see? What does it matter? It will be a wasteland when you are gone. I wept over her, salt in her wounded eyes. She would have to learn the world from me now. We lay there waiting to see what we would see. There in the dark grass, I asked, who were you before you bought me from a handful of radishes? And she said, will I tell you my own story? It is a tale of a brother.